Eh, contando también un dato increíble, que el Conqueror siguió al Belgrano durante 36 horas y después le disparó fuera de la zona de exclusión. Aproximadamente a las 16 horas del día 2 y escoltado por dos destructores, el crucero general Belgrano navega en dirección al continente. Desde hace varias horas y sin saberlo, el convoy cuenta con un nuevo acompañante, el submarino nuclear Conqueror. Dado que el buque perseguido está claramente fuera de la zona de exclusión y que el rumbo tomado lo aleja cada vez más de ese área, el jefe de la flota vacila en dar la orden de fuego. Solicita permiso a Londres y la respuesta contundente de la primer ministro descarta todo escrúpulo. Dos torpedos alcanzan a la vieja nave por el lado de babor. De sus 1.070 tripulantes pierden la vida 321. Con esta decisión y escudándose en razones militares y tácticas, Margaret Thatcher hiere de muerte a las negociaciones. Años más tarde, el periodista inglés Robert Fox denunciará que los datos sobre la ubicación del Belgrano han sido enviados al agregado militar británico en Santiago por el comando naval chileno de Punta Arenas. En mi local paper, The Scotsman, there was an artless interview when the captain of the Conqueror, his name was Commander Christopher Rafford Brown, was asked Why did you sink the Belgrano? Oh, he said, I didn't do this by myself. I'm a first-time submarine commander. I did it, he said, on orders from Northwood. And Northwood was the fleet headquarters. Now, this was a totally different story to that which Parliament, press and people in Britain had been told. Small lies tend to be part of larger lies. And therefore I began to ask questions. And one of the questions, very simple, was what was the position of the Belgrano when she was sunk? And then, by parliamentary answer, uh, what was her course at the time that she was sunk? The answer was 280 degrees. Now that is west, northwest. And I then asked, were there any units of the task force to the west, that is nearer Argentina, of the area where she was sunk? The answer was no. So this was untrue. The submarine commander wrote his account in a book called Our Falklands War, the men of the task force tell their own story. And it revealed that for 36 hours he had been following the Berlinas, pero que nunca había sido por lo menos contado así por los británicos. Como la base chilena de Punta Arenas sirvió de apoyo para los aviones espías ingleses. El ataque al Belgrano se ha puesto en evidencia que la información transmitida por los satélites norteamericanos expone los barcos argentinos a una situación de enorme riesgo. Por esta razón y resguardándose para enfrentar un eventual ataque de naves chilenas, la flota se repliega a sus puertos. The air base at uh, Punta Arenas was used from an early stage in the war for Royal Air Force spy planes. They were cannibalers, photographic reconnaissance cannibalers, which were flown in circumstances of extraordinary clandestinity down to the, the very tip of South America. Firstly flew from the normal base in East Anglia to Belize. They were repainted into Chilean markings. They flew via Santiago where 
One of them was seen by the reporter John Snow, and then down to Punta Arenas. And at Punta Arenas, <clears throat> both people at the area and those coming in on civilian flights were prevented from seeing anything that was going on on the tarmac or the apron by having the windows covered up and blinds pulled down on aircraft. The planes were able to operate with relative impunity. They flew at a very, very large height, 60,000 feet, a ceiling above the capability of Argentine interceptors or, well, there weren't any surface-to-air missiles in the area anyway. The Chileans also provided a special forces base in Punta Arenas and thereabouts. This again was deeply secret. It was the second important aspect of the direct military collaboration between Britain and Chile. The base was used for special forces commanders, mostly members of the special air service, but also taken from other units, in order to carry out clandestine surveillance, reconnaissance, target identification, and sabotage missions within Argentina. They were detected internationally on one remarkable occasion when an RAF, sorry, a Royal Navy Sea King helicopter had to crash land on Chilean territory. It had gone completely the wrong way, so far west that it was completely implausible to suggest, as was of course suggested, that the helicopter had inadvertently lost its way from a coastal patrol. <laughs> la cana, le decía yo el rato, viaja, que estaba mirando el monitor. Eh, 15.000 personas vieron la película de Orioste, que ahora salió del circuito y que todavía no está editada en video, pero que se va, se va a editar. Capaz es poco para lo que son los números de la televisión y por eso queríamos mostrártela. Que es también una manera de mostrarnos, ¿eh? de vernos. 
Magdalena Ruiz Guiñazú, parte 2. ¿Cómo era vivir con un padre canciller en el Palacio San Martín?